Hello everybody, welcome once again to Let's Ghost Thief Deadly Shadows. Today we're going to tackle the Pagan Sanctuary, so I'll start where I left off last time. The save should drop us right outside the well. A mere right click away from beginning the mission here in Garrett's briefing. The Keepers want me to steal an object from the Pagans called the Jack Knoll's Paw. It's a mummified hand. Charming. But then what should I expect from a strange cult of unpredictable primitives who worship the ancient trickster god? No one's heard much about the Pagans lately, but Artemis gave me a tip about this South Quarter neighborhood, and I've heard rumors of break-ins and howling in the night. This tunnel is going the right way. I can smell it. Vegetation and rot. Stealing from the pagans is never easy, or smart. They and their creatures don't have any love for me. When I'm done, the keepers better come through on their part of the bargain. I don't like risking my neck for nothing. Severed hands don't pay the rent. So as always, we will put it on expert. And let's look at the goals. Steal the jackal's paw from the pagans. When your other objectives are complete, leave by way of the pagan tunnels. Note it would be helpful to have a map of this pagan territory. At the end of day two, we're starting off with our blackjack, our dagger, our mechanical eye, our lock picks, 25 water, 30 broadhead, 5 noisemaker, 5 fire, 4 gas, 14 moss arrows, 3 oil flasks, 10 healing potions, 3 gas bombs, 13 flash bombs, 6800 in cash, 1700 in other loot, the velvet bag, the builder's chalice, and a bunch of keys. We do not have a map of the pagan sanctuary yet, we have to find that one in the mission. Let's get started. Now this mission starts off with a conversation amongst a couple of thugs who will then wander off and almost always <clears throat> get into a big fight with some pagans. And it's really unpredictable how that fight will end up, but it's always smart to wait until it happens and wait until it's over before making any major moves away from the start of the mission. What you stop for? Shh, I'm trying to listen. You never know, could be something up ahead. You mean like the silver nuggets you said was down here? I said I heard there might be silver or gold in some mines, maybe around here. Yeah, but uh, I heard there might be something else too. Like what? Like maybe some strange people down here. Like maybe they don't want no visitors. Don't want anyone knowing they're here. Aw, oh, Taffet, Bert! You don't mean you brought us into pagan territory? Pagans? Taffet, cripes, I thought I smelled something off. Let's beat it. Did they find us here? Um, about that, we can't beat it. Cause we've lost. But I'm open to suggestions. And, uh, we should try to keep it down, okay? Well, we ought to send one of us up ahead. Make sure it's all clear. Well, I ain't going. No tiff taffin' way. Um, we do eeny meeny for it. Ready? Eeny meeny miny. No, oh, never mind. I'll do it. You watch my back. Here I go. All this for some taffin' silver nuggets you ain't even sure is here. Good luck. I'm watching your back. Yell if you see any pagans or gold. So. He'll wander off, and eventually the fight will start. For now, 
At the bottom of the well, you can get some copper coins worth 25, bring my total to 1%. Sounds like he already ran off and started the fight. But I see that, uh, I'll go ahead and grab this just because he knocked it off the stack of crates. There's a healing potion. Oops, got too close to him. I haven't seen that happen before, but that's not a big deal. There's a healing potion on top of those four crates, which you might have seen, and one of my friends knocked it off while he was walking around. I'll just... Good to see you. Get lost. Pay a little bit better attention, maybe, this time. He'll never mess with me again. He'll never mess with anyone again. Nope. Nobody double-crosses me and lives to brag about it. All right, let's... Try this little move again. Okay, got the healing potion at least. Oh, they finally fished him from the river. <laughs> what was left of him anyway? Well, they'll never pin that on me. There are a couple more things to get at this opening campsite. There's a fire arrow right inside the campfire, which can be tough to get. Yeah. Hey, yep. hey. Because, as is often the case, we have to move fast, but not too fast. If we want to avoid learning the brigade here. Oh. That was a surprise. They weren't even fighting me, alerted to me. They were hearing pagans. Alright. Well, this is a grand opportunity to grab the fire arrow. Go over to this corner and get the silver nugget. Worth 150 brings my total to 6%. Alright, my thugs are off fighting the pagans now. And sometimes they lose right away, sometimes they take out a couple. I have never seen them get past the shaman. He always manages to kill them with his spells. If they get past the, uh, if they get past the swordsman, which it looks like they took out at least one. But it looks like the thug died too. Or maybe not. Somebody ought to do something about all this. <laughs> but it ain't gonna be me. That looks like he's decided to head back. Fair enough. On this crate, which is uh, to the left, as you face their campsite from the entrance, you can find a ruby worth 125, brings my total to 11%, and a copper spoon worth 25, brings my total to 12%, all on that handy crate. Okay, there's one dead pagan. Mantle up here in this middle passage, head down to these crates at the end, and you can find a ruby goblet worth 100, brings my total to 16%. Right over here is a silver nugget worth another 100, brings my total to 20%. Now, I like the other approach better. I'm just coming over here to scout things out a little. Here's the shaman. And you'll notice these wandering lights. Can't do anything about them. They move very slowly, which gives you plenty of time to get past them, but it also means if you do get caught by one, you can be pretty well screwed. I'm just gonna wait right here. It looks like there there's another body over there, but I can't tell if it's the thug or a pagan or both. The real issue is that I want to pickpocket the shaman. But I probably need to wait until this light cycles back around that rock to do it.
Obi's it done? First, Diane, priestess of wood, give us enchantment and beset them minds. Yeah. What? <gasps> Finally! Okay, I think it'll be easier to approach him from behind. <clears throat> by heading the other way. There's not really anything over there anyway. I just wanted to see who was dead. And actually, I still want to do that. Huh. What? Ha -ha. Here you be, killer. There's a dead pagan. Bees, you ready to die? Now I'm forced to ask myself what killed that pagan because I don't see any of my thugs over there. How odd. It doesn't matter much though. It's much smarter to approach the, you know, sort of main pagan camp from the other, other direction precisely because of that stationary shaman blocking the way. Well, there's a dead pagan and one dead thug. <laughs> Looks like the other two thugs both made it back to camp. Okay. Well, I may never know what killed that other pagan because... There's no way to... If the thugs get that far, they will not survive. So it wasn't the thugs. He must have just gotten pinched or taken a dive or something. Doesn't matter much. In this corner, there's another silver nugget worth another hundred. Brings my total to 24%. So you see this woman here. She kind of moves back and forth. When she turns and heads north, I want to zip in behind her and wall flattened behind a crate to the left. I can run up a good portion of the way, but I'll need to slow down before I get too close. And then right back here, you could wall flatten, get the three broad heads off that crate, and then wait until she turns to the south and you can slip in behind her. Like so. How be it done? First, Diane, priestess of wood, give us enchantment and beset them minds. Yes? Then the it's easiest to get to this note during their conversation. Cress and Backy, finders you anyone or anything in them minds that bees not a pagan, then bees you deading it and feeder them fleshes to the blood roots. Bees we must stay or secreted, shaman sing green. Men fools, thinker they bees acting of them own free will does whatever we wants. Ha ha, stupid weeksy man fools. And then? Then, after the magics wear off, the damage be's done, and if there be's a problem... Larkspur seals them deal with more other... persuasions. Yeah, or he be's just kills them. We got... That... Is that up? <gasps> Bad timing. Looks to me like a smarter course is gonna be to break right and wait for the lights and the patrols to cycle. There are a few things that we need to get out of this sort of central area, apart from reading that note. Ha! <laughs> Stupid, weeksy man fools. And then? Then, after the magics wear oh. arms. What Oops. is that there? <gasps> Too soon. Maybe I just need to back up and hide in the tunnel I came out of until the light cycles out. Stupid, weeksy man fools. And then? Then, after the magics wear off, the damage be's done. And if there be's a problem, Larkspur seals them deal with more other persuasions. Yeah, or he be's just kills them. 
Larkspur, if you paid attention in Thief 2, was with Victoria at the end of Trail of Blood. He's one of the pagans that she gave orders to, along with Diane, who we'll hear has taken over the pagan cult, or whatever you want to call them, since the death of Victoria. So, with their conversation over, and the light cycling away, get, you can get a moss arrow out of this tunnel entrance to the sewers. And then, you just kind of need to time your movements in the central area to her patrol. Over here, the dead fish are junk, but you want the copper fork in the middle. It's worth 25, brings my total to 25%. And there's a note to read. Fangmort, Maker Yu Shurzi Leifer bees getting them map of them sanctuary to me before sunbreak. You not let him wasting time and hide in them sewers again, Woodbine. So that gives me a note that the pagan Leifer has a map with him and he may be in the sewers. Okay. Now I think opening and closing this chest is gonna green alert the patroller no matter what I do. That... some rustling? But inside the chest, there are two broadhead Maybe arrows two and a jade worth a hundred brings my total to 29%. Yes? Yes, opening and closing trips a green alert. And then I can roll up on this guy from behind to pickpocket his wand. Hey, I bees picky pocketed. Where bees are <gasps> missing? Oh, and apparently she notices the copper fork missing, so that's a yellow alert. I think he's gonna hear this if I drop it right here, but... Yep. But I've discovered something about Deadly Shadows. If I screw up the first attempt to drop something like I just did, then I don't have any choice but to take advantage of a glitch. Observe. If I drop it now... It floats in the air until someone bumps into it. Some sprite or pixie player that tricks on me. There bees enough bees. <gasps> What's uh -oh. that? That time I wasn't paying enough attention to her yellow alert. So I will drop the wand again and get myself to a more secure spot to wait her out. I best get on with things. There bees nothing to see here. That's right. Now turn around. There you go. There you go. Uh oh. Sees me something over there. I thought that was gonna happen. <sighs> I didn't expect her to turn around straight away. I thought that she would face the sewer tunnel at the end and then resume her patrol. This goes to show you can never get complacent, not even in Thief 3. So we're, uh, we're clear now. We just need to get down that sewer tunnel where the other conversationalist went earlier. Let's move. Good, good, good. If we can get into the sewers, the rest is very easy. So I'm just going to do a real save because we're now past the point where the fight can cause any variance. I still have no idea what killed that other pagan, but because I know the thugs didn't get that far. How odd. Anyway, when you get to this sewer section, I like to take this side tunnel to the right, come over here, and just jump and mantle up in the northeast corner. Now there's a patroller, she's pretty far away right now, which is good. 
because you need her out of range of hearing that chest open and close to avoid a green alert. Anyway, the chest has a ruby ring in it worth 75, brought my total to 32%. I'm going to wait for her to turn back and then follow her around the corner. Once I get here, I want to wall flatten, wait for her to cycle back again. We can just, if we don't get too close to the torch, we can make it around that corner without triggering an alert from the stationary pagan to the northwest. So once we get around that corner, we want to come up to these crates, we can find a jade goblet and two explosive mines. Explosive mine. The explosive mine is used to create traps for your opponents. Throw it to the ground and when it comes to rest it will be armed. The jade goblet is worth 75 and brings my total to 34%. And when she comes back, the missing jade goblet will trigger a yellow alert. So I will wait that out like I always do. No alert that time. How weird. I got a yellow alert last time. On my practice run, I mean. I guess you never know for sure. Anyway. So just head in behind this guy. Now there's a tree beast walking around the canal underneath me. But don't be afraid, the canal is actually by far the best way to get around this area. Creep up to the edge, grab the healing potion off the shelf, and the only thing I want to do before I drop down there, you see there's a shaman patrolling up here, and on top of that, there is a stationary pagan across the way. I just want to pickpocket the shaman before I go to the canal. <laughs> Is there a picky pocketer around? Why, yes, yes. They're bees, as you would say. Now, you only get one shot at this, because if you quick load and drop it, it'll do the float, so I'm gonna try and wait until I can drop it quietly. But if I screw up, I screw up. And we'll just have to accept the bug. Well done, well done. Nice quiet drop. So now I want to get down to the canal, obviously. You want to do that while the tree beast is away. But this... The spot where you got the potion is, I think, the best drop point. And then... You want to just... You can move pretty quick down here without making any noise. What you want to do is just get to the very end of the canal so that you can mantle up right behind Homeboy here. <laughs> now, he will green alert when we open and close his chest. Nothing we can really do about that. 
Inside, there's a ruby worth 125, brings well, my total to just a little 39%. And then, we've also managed to find the map. So that's Leafer standing there. So here's where we came in. There was the campfire. Here's the little mine section. Another campfire. The sewer entrance. Another campfire. Here's where we are now, along with the load zone. When we move into the sanctuary itself, we'll arrive here at this sewer entrance back to the tunnels, and you'll actually find it's a series of buildings. So we have in the southeast, training grounds and the hammer fool factory, although why they use a gear, the symbol of the mechanists, I do not know. To the north of all this is a creek. In the northwest corner, there's the shaman's Air, the shaman's quarters, the northeast, sleep sea, the sleeping quarters, and past the shaman's quarters, it shows another load zone, but there isn't a load zone, to taproot, and the taproot is where we can find the Jack Doll's paw. But there's nothing left inside the tunnels, we just need to make our way to the sanctuary. Best way to do that, drop right back down. <sighs> Good see. Good see. I think I can avoid that alert. Hold on. I also think I forgot to close the chest. Indeed I did. I'll wait for that green alert to settle. Hmm. Just some sounders. Now, I think if I go to the far corner and drop there, well, why she's looking this way, I don't know, but <clears throat> I think if I drop in the other corner, I can still do so unseen, and I might be far enough away that he doesn't green alert to the sound, which is what I was hoping for. Now we need to creep back through here. Take advantage of the fact that, uh, unlike Thief and Thief 2, water is quiet, which is great. Wait until the shaman's away, wait until the tree beast is turned, and then we can just mantle up right in front of the ladder to the sanctuary. I hope he goes all the way around the corner this time. That would be ideal. Perfect. Now we just need to head up this ladder to the sanctuary. All right, there we go. No melees in the pagan sanctuary, but there is a shaman who's very fond of committing suicide, so we'll have to be careful of that. Well, careful. There's nothing I can do about it. She's committed suicide every time I've played this mission, eventually. Sometimes it takes her longer than others, but she always takes her dive, so. Here's a note. All shamans, to havering the jackknoll's paw, first must be done the ritual of the root. None can take her the paw without the ritual, which bees known only to us shaman. If them paw is tookered without the ritual, then jackknoll's paw bees will kills they that tookered it. The foolsy pug leaf bees deaded this way in his forgetting. Bees will none us ever forget agains. Shaman Woodbine. So that gives me a new objective. Learn the ritual of the root to gain access to the jackknoll's paw. The shaman knows the ritual, so search his area. It's funny that it says his because the shaman is a woman. So there are two pagans in here, but it's not too hard to sneak around. <gasps> Something again? Hmm. Oh, seems goodsy. Perhaps I spoke too soon. I have a tendency to do that. Seems like every time I mouth off about something not being too tough, BAM! I get caught in an alert. So, maybe I should just never say that again. Anyway, the man patrols in, uh... City fools. Buildering badness. Pretty straightforward. If I be Seezy Lou, Death to all yeah. hammerheads. Okay. 
He patrols counterclockwise around the room. The woman has a sort of three-pointed patrol in and around the campfire. First thing I like to do is go to this chest. It has a flash bomb inside that I want to get. She, at least, will green alert when the chest is opened and shut. The noise is there. Well, I bees get on with workings now. But if you time the opening and closing right, you can get away with huh? no alerts from the guy. Now you've doubtless noticed the ruby gleaming over there in the corner. I prefer to just go straight out the door when everyone's back is turned. In the green. Oh, just then you heard the shaman I was talking about. She jumped from... She didn't really jump. Her patrol just wandered too far, but she fell off a ledge and died on impact. That was... That was one of the fastest I've ever seen. But it, like I said, it always happens eventually. Oh. I'll point her corpse out to you when I get to where she was. Anyway. You're safe if you crouch right here. But the woman will yellow alert when she notices the ruby missing. So you want to make sure you've got a good window to grab it and get out. Uh-oh. What's that? Bad timing. But the ruby's worth 125, brings my total to 44%. Maybe I should just wait in this shadow to grab it. Yeah, Garrett can't wall flatten here. Seizy you in the green. There we go. That's what I wanted. Then you want to just climb this ladder. Well, not yet. I want to pickpocket the ground level shaman first. I want to get past that door. Get right over here. This is a fine place to wait. Then nab her wand. Wait a minute. The bees knew I had it a second ago. But with her, it's fairly easy for her to, to wait until she patrols away. And we should be able to just drop it on her patrol path. Now she usually can't see the dead shaman, but I have played one practice round where she did find her, so. Not a whole lot to be done. Let me listen, make sure. Yeah, that's just the end point of her patrol. That wasn't a green alert. So now I'm ready to go upstairs. Oddly enough, you usually end up okay if you just run by the door like that. Now I'm going to climb this ladder. Now, if you r run, you can Please. sometimes make it. But I usually have... It's a lot more reliable just to jump across that little gap. But you have to wait until the shaman's away or she'll alert from the noise. Well, let's just watch her. Wait until she heads away. Me. Takers no enemy for prisoners. Feeders them man fools to them birds. 
So right here, you're able to get up to the second floor of the room we started in. And there's plenty to find up here. Probably the most difficult thing to get is over on top of this fallen ceiling, roof, whatever it is. Because you need to... jump up without getting heard and then I've never managed to reach over that barrel or mantle on top of it without bumping it and alerting everyone so you just want to creep out onto the slope and raise up to grab the silver candlestick worth 50 brings my total to 46 percent and the crates will shift when you grab it so you have to make sure to all yeah. hammerheads okay Oh man. You have to make sure the timing is good so they don't hear the crate shift. And then, you might have noticed what happened to me just then. When you're creeping back, you have to be very careful of your footing. For some reason, it's extremely easy for Garrett to, easy, you in the green. to slip and fall off of this particular structure. The good news is you don't have to jump to get back down. You can just walk. So then as you creep back across the boards, being happy that the tough part's over. Well, it's not even tough. It's just, I guess I should call it the sketchy part. You come to a shelf with a noisemaker arrow, and underneath that arrow is a book. Monday. Well, we've made an arrangement with the, well, I guess I'll call them the peas for safety's sake. They'll use our garden and such, with a fellow named Scythe tending the crops. Not sure why the wife and I were in such a giving mood, but those plums the woman brought were beyond delicious. Saturday. Dinner was a disaster. The spread was first rate from the garden, but no sooner did we sit than when that old biddy Lorna screams and jumps out of her chair, points at the window saying something was watching her. I tried to calm her, but then the something let out a yowl. Everyone left in a panic. Harriet in tears. Monday. I don't want to worry Harriet, but I daren't go in the garden. I used to go and check on things, but now I'm an unwelcome stranger and most of the crops I don't recognize. What do they need all those people for? I asked about the hole I asked about a hole they were digging, and Scythe gave me a look, put a chill right down my spine. Thursday. I'm going to confront Scythe. A man should be able to walk his own garden without fear. And for what? Carrots and apples? This arrangement with the pagans hasn't worked out, and now it ends. We never agreed to all these strangers coming and going, and we never agreed to those horrible things, whatever they are. And I'm sure that confrontation went well for him. So inside this chest are three more broadhead arrows. Should be able to open and shut it with no trouble. And since the shaman has committed suicide, it's pretty easy to progress by he like heading across the way. From the earth. Hmm, that old gear looks precarious. Someone could have an accident. Garrett contemplating murder, but that's not yes. how I roll. You beast crowding me. We shouldn't have much trouble getting down without damage. And right here is the shaman who committed suicide. She walks a little circle up there where I came into this area. And every time I've played this mission, she's taken a dive. But she has landed very nicely in the shadows out of sight of anyone who might spot her, so I don't have to worry about it. Anyway, here adjacent to the training grounds on the shelf, there's a silver urn worth 150, brings my total to 52%. I wonder if I can get back upstairs. Feed them man fools to them earths.
So I mean, the right. pagans are preparing for war. Bees this right, Driftwood? Bees like the treesy comes your strength from the earth. So I want to trigger this conversation here. 